Honourable Ministers, uh, dear Victoria Kwakwa, the World Bank Vice President for Eastern and uh, Southern Africa, the UNICEF General Director for Eastern and uh, Southern Africa, Development Partners and Technical Experts, distinguished invités, je vous souhaite la bienvenue au Rwanda. C'est pour moi. C'est pour moi un réel plaisir de m'adresser à vous aujourd'hui sur ce thème pressant et existentiel qui répond à l'avenir de notre continent. I'm thankful to be here today. On the second foundational learning exchange on this year of education, as declared by our African Union, on this final speech stretch towards the targets of the continental education strategy for Africa. It's both humbling and encouraging that Rwanda would be interested to host this important forum and participate in these essential discussions. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that the caliber of senior officials, education and finance experts, agents of continental development and Pan-African champions for the 2063 Africa we want must be fully appreciated for their contribution to the body of knowledge and for the wisdom they share with us today. Therefore, I will not attempt to rob these experts of an opportunity to discuss, for one, the, pro the progress that thus far in achieving literacy, numeracy, and essential skills for elementary age students across the continent. Neither do I wish to occupy too much of the space that they have been aptly allocated to raise concerns on the challenges that remain in the foundational learning, notably in learner psychological health and well-being at the accompaniment of children with special need. However, honorable guests, I'm compelled to remark on the current landscape of education, particularly foundational education across the world, and more specifically on our continent. It seems I worry that while literacy rates have improved in all our countries, while recognition of the vital importance of early childhood education, appropriate nutrition for infants, psychosocial support, and toddler and child development has significantly increased, the problem persists, threatening to worsen over time. Ladies and gentlemen, reading and comprehension of simple texts, as has been pointed out by uh, the Rwandan Minister of Education, is still an issue for nine out of 10 of children aged 20 and below in the majority of African countries. This is a loud alarm bell. Let us picture this child aged 10 who cannot read properly, write properly, count properly, a child whose environment is not fertile for the development of strong personal qualities either. And let us go even further still in, in this in discomfort and picture a society where the majority of children do not develop soft values like kindness, empathy, respect, flexibility, patience, integrity, and teamwork through foundational learning, preventing them from building healthy relationships, navigating social environments, and contributing positively in personal and profession, professional settings. We are living in times that are, let us admit it, pulling parents in all kinds of directions away from their core responsibility to raise families. Our children are offered up to the education system and seldom do we engage with educators in an attempt to create a thread of communication so that there is a sustainable continuity of care between schools, sitting at home and in the community. How can we tap into the expertise of our educators to make them active stakeholders in the full context within which the child is evolving? How do we put the child at the center of all interventions during their foundational learning age so that the individual needs are 
catered for. A collective conscious across all caregivers will help us develop protection mechanisms while at the same time eradicating any and all handicapping factors. This rethinking of our approach, I believe, will yield more targeted policies that address the issue at hand in a more holistic manner. For we all know that education, and most especially the foundational education, is the bedrock upon which skills are built. And skills must be adapted to changing times. The skills that were needed for the Stone Age, agrarian or industrial ages are not all relevant for today's technological age or tomorrow's AI revolution. How do how we educate, train, and skill our young people for the future of work and development is critical. And this will include the policies we put in place, the agility of our curricula to adapt to the pace of changing times, the quality of teacher training, equitable resources, resource distribution, parental and community engagement, as well as the ability to build in the formative years of child development those precious qualities of character and confidence. In an age where the human capacity for human discourse, creativity, and intellectual curiosity are all increasingly threatened by highly performant, but sometimes regrettably applied, artificial intelligence. What is to become of the future young African's mind if devoid of essential knowledge? Should we fail to strengthen foundational learning and critical thinking, increase primary education completion rates, and uh, to allocate more resources to education, specifically to the more financially vulnerable learners, what is it to be the in what is to be the long-term cost of the youth of this continent, their skill development, employability, and overall welfare? And in turn, what is this to be psychosocial? psychological and security toll across Africa if the citizens of, I believe, the most promising continent on earth are denied the essential tools they need to succeed and self-actualize as the world finally makes space for new players in global development. Within our individual and shared capacity, we must pledge to integrate every inspiring insight and all valuable foresight shared today in our efforts for improved foundational learning in our country and on our continent. Esteemed guests, yes, Rwanda has come a long way. Prior to the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, the local education system was exclusionary, divisive, underfunded, fragile, both inept and inapt. At that time, higher education was dominated by one, only one institution, the National University of Rwanda, and the system graduated merely 2,000 students in three decades between 1960, I mean, 63 to 1994. In contrast, as of uh, 2019, there were 40 higher institution in the country with a total enrollment of uh, 86,140 students and still growing. This was a steep hill to climb, and we must recognize the political will that has fueled this investment, prioritizing the education of a previously severely illiterate population. It is said that education breeds confidence, and confidence breeds hope, and hope breeds peace. For Rwanda, peace will always be the ultimate goal, and therefore diligent investment in education is for us a no-brainer. As is often expressed in old wisdoms, education cultivates character and confidence, which in turn inspire the optimism through which peace thrives. We commend our government for many efforts geared towards the betterment of the whole ecosystem, from the students, the teachers, the parents, and the community. Honorable guests, in Buto Foundation, which I honored to, to chair, launched 
a pilot early childhood development project in the Kayonza district over 10 years ago, serving five areas key to, ch to child development, namely brain stimulation, health, nutrition, hygiene, positive parenting, and child protection. The program has now expanded to 14 additional uh, districts, and uh, the ECD has become a national and policy priority with the launch of uh, our National Child Development Agency. With a conducive policy and planning, planning framework set up by the government of Rwanda, and the collaboration of invaluable partners, our pilot project has translated into a decade later of 138,000 children and their parents having received services through our 16 model ECD centers and home-based services. And these num numbers are on a constant yet rapid rise. Honorable guests, it's my deep conviction that solid early education will become all the more vital as time advances. Achieving sustainable development will require our children and their own to wield every available ounce of intellectual, social, and emotional intelligence to ensure that education and growth actually translate into progress for all. My parting words on advancing foundation learning, dear guests, are just a wish. It's a wish that our budgetary allocations for education, our policy coordination, our efforts for collaboration, our unrolling of training programs for educators and caregivers, our parental and community engagement, our education infrastructure development, the agility of our curricula in rapidly changing times, and lastly, our solemn accountability to our pledges will all match the level of urgency that our ambitions requires. Africa will only achieve a desirable 2063 if we build solid roads and highways today for tomorrow's youth to drive our continent fast and surely to its rightful destination. May quality education at foundational level and above cement our path to the, continent, to the continent's development. Et pour conclure, Excellence, distingués invités, je vous remercie de, vous, de votre attention et vous souhaite de profiter pleinement de l'hospitalité de votre pays. Puisque Gali, notre chère ville, vous donnez envie, vous donnez Vous donnez envie de revenir, vous donne envie de revenir plus souvent pour de tels échanges fructueux. I thank you for your kind attention.